four basic regions, the Hong Kong, the China, the Singapore, and Taiwan. It's a multilingual site with a lot of feature. Now let me just show you what were the best feature requirements of this project. Yeah. On Drupal, it supports the multilingual and we implemented the multi-site. Uh, all the four regions website are running on a single code base and they are on multi-site architecture on different database. But there are still more some micro-site sharing the same database amongst them themselves. And there are also exercise classes calendar. We initially started with the calendar module and the client requirement was extensive so we have to drop that and build our own calendar module. You can go to the website californiafitness.com slash HK and you can take a look at the, at the there's a schedule link where you, you can see the functionality. Now the, the main part of the challenges, the first part as we faced it earlier uh, with with other clients is that Drupal does not have a clear separation between the staging and the product life environment. So this was a, a, a big uh, roadblock using Drupal. And the second thing was the client wanted the single login feature. As an example, if he is, he is already logged in on one website and when he visits the second website, he should be automatically login. So now let me share with you these two features on how we overcame it. Okay, the first is keeping a separate staging and live environment. For for features migration, it's 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 quite easy. But when it comes down to the content, there 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 are so many parameters that we have to we have to con consider before implementing it. Our first step was we look for available solutions. There were two models in particular. One is the services module which is very powerful and the second is the deploy module. It, it has the feature so that you can push a content from one website to another website. Both of them they are, they, are, they, are, they are pretty powerful, but they did not specifically meet our requirements. So what we did was we did a study of these two websites and developed our own custom module in a workflow which the client wanted. Okay. So the first thing what we did was we made our website to act both as a SOAP server and also as a client server so that it can push content and also it can accept content. And we developed an, an API for each content type so that the, the site editors have the ability to push content by using by either the blogs or the articles or, or any for, even forum submissions also. And we have handled the, all those fields that are included the CCK field, the custom fields that are associated with the node, the taxonomy, files, attachment, and all those. Now, I'm going to the next slide. The next slide is just a basic example of, of just making, uh, implementing a SOAP server in your Drupal website. Uh, you will find many resources of how, how to generate a SOAP client, but what I have, what I have highlighted is, is the generation of a SOAP server. It's pretty simple, a three step, that you just create a SOAP server object as shown in the port snippet. The second is that you just declare the method, like in, in our case, I just call it a save node method. And the third is register the data structure. It's actually the namespace that you're going to accept. Now, the second slide is on how we are going to push the content. I've provided a snapshot 
of the XML that is being shared among the two websites. Here, one point is we have implemented one feature from the deploy module, and this was pre uh, and this is a major fee feature in terms of functionality and logic. What happened was that if a content, if a particular content is re residing in two separate systems, it isn't necessary that the node ID will be the same. So what we did was we used a universal key gen generator so that it can identify content whether it exists in the two system or not so that it can appropriately do either the insert or the update operation. Now the second part is that we just provided a backend page where the, the client editor can push the content by different content type. We have provided by push everything to live feature also, push what's new, push blog, these are all the content types in the website. Okay, the second part, how to implement the auto login. There were many modules which already does this. There are some limitations on those modules like it has to be a, a subdomain or it should share database and all those. But what we did is we implemented a basic logic using what we call a beacon image. What happens is that when a user is when a user logins and it has to share login with three separate websites, it will insert an iframe beacon with a particular URL for the other three websites. And when those website is called, they will the other website when they receive receive the request, they will automatically log in that particular user. So that when when you go to another site, you already log in. There there were certain ways to do it, and some of the modules they they change the way how Drupal handles the session and the cookie. And the client was specifically strong on we should not trust, we we should not modify the way Drupal hand handle those sessions and catching. So we 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 there were specific methods we have to implement so that we do not touch those. So let me just go through quickly over what we have done. Number one step, as you are aware that that multiple Drupal sites can share database tables among themselves. So as shown in the snip snippet, it is showing it is one of the website is, is sharing the all the u users tables. So that if you are implementing of, of for three websites, you have to make one one database as your default user database, and the other websites have to share the tables of the first website. We have used the database prefix method method uh, in the setting of PHP to achieve it. And the second part is to generate the log the login beacons iframe. As in the code snippet, you can see that you can call the user hook and on line number 60 this the token that is being generated this is I, I would suggest if you are implementing similar to this one you use the latest hacks and all those logic because unless this function is secure your token generation function is secure there can be a, a possibility of a security vulnerability we haven't found it till now, but I would suggest to be very careful of what it, what logic you are implementing in this custom module token. And the second one is that we are inserting this token, saving it into a table called sum table for now. And the other part is that you need to share this sum table here also. And now the rest of the part is it's it's generating an iframe beacon for all the websites that you are sharing with. Here we have in line number 63, you can see we have a backend page where we 
where we assign the URLs of other website with which we want to share the login. On the next slide, number three, you can see a, a snapshot when one logins on any one website, you can see uh, the iframe login beacons of the other three websites are loaded. So when this iframe is loaded, it will call it will call this particular URL with the with the token that is being generated, and when it hits the other URL, it will aut automatically log in that particular user. Number four, I have shown you an example of how. The iframe URL website uh, URL part is hit. Here are some basic low logic on how you can implement it. Like if the user is already logged in, you have to skip it. Else, the line number 94. What happened is that it accepts it. It took in all the parameters, the token parameters, and and does a check. This function is very, very powerful, and uh, I think it's based on your requirement and, and, and what you are actually implementing. Now, for the rest of the thing, it's just a simple that if everything is okay, then you just you just call the login hook under user more module, and the user will be automatically login. Okay, now we are coming, we are at a stage where we are, we are in a position and we are, we are looking at various methods of what will be the roadmap ahead for these two platforms. In, in Drupal, in Drupal and specifically with the launch of Drupal 7, a lot of flexibility have been, have been provided that were missing in Drupal five and and six and we we have used extensive advantage of those new new features and we are exper experimenting out with with the first thing is the selective module launch. But right now the, the Drupal bootstrap launch all the module hooks on call but we are trying to reduce that and on and specifically load selective one. We are looking at the E framework, Y double I E framework, uh, for a guidance on logic on how to achieve this, and maybe on my next webinar I can share some more details on it. And the second thing on Drupal that we are working on right now is the integration with Mongo or an Oracle database. Drupal with the release of Drupal Seven. The, the major advantage has been the separation of the database layer. That there, there are already modules available for Oracle and Mongo DB drivers with which or which you can run your Drupal website. But but those support are mostly for core modules and we found out most of them are not production ready to, to run any critical web website. So we are quite involved in, in, in that one and trying to solutionize it. Okay. Regarding Magento, the first parameter is the performance. As, as you must be aware of it, since it has a ton lots of features in a gen framework, there, there, there are certain performance hindrance. But with the use of new performance optimization methods, like like the use of Redis no SQL instead of using the your the, the, the default file catching to offload some of the catching mechanism to a no SQL database, there has been a tremendous increase in in performance speed. And also with with more support for different type of database and among that that you the ability to use 
different types of database. I uh, I think Madeleine to um, the performance issue uh, will not be a hindrance. We have overcome a lot of performance hindrance in some of the major pro projects, and if possible, I can share with you on on an another webinar in 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 the future, and those performance optimization tasks where most of them are being in in test module now which I can share and I want to share with the Magento uh, Magento community developers and and I obviously would like to receive some feedbacks on it. The last point on Magento is the EVA model versus the flat module. The, the EVA model makes the developer independent of of the database schema that, that is being used but but with some major projects what we are facing is is the seller wants to sell different types of products on Magento. Right now the types of products that can be created on Magento is limited so we want to we want to expand more more support for the types of products. So these are the roadmap which Ixula have in mind for Drupal and Magento framework, and it would be great if you can, if 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 someone is thinking along the same line or trying to achieve the same thing, I think we 